As we conclude the Sermon on the Mount, obviously just a conclusion of studying, not a conclusion of living it, right? Uh, it's all about how to live in the kingdom of God. Uh, remember the title of this whole series, Let God Reign. Every time you think of the word reign, you think of the word rule. His kingdom is ruling my life. He's the king of kings. And so how does he want me to live in the kingdom? When God reigns in my life, all of a sudden, remember, all of a sudden when God reigns, I'm blessed. And because I'm blessed, I can, I can be salt and light to the world. I can, uh, I can know how to handle my anger. Instead of it turning into murder, it turns into love. And uh, I, I keep my commitments in my marriage. I, I love my enemies. I keep my word. I keep my oath. My integrity is strong. Uh, I uh, handle relationships right. And when they're wrong, I, ru I, I rush up there to make sure they're right, even before I go worship. And I, I don't judge people anymore. I try to develop healthy relationships where we help each other, hold each other accountable, do the right thing as we live within the kingdom of God. As a matter of fact, I seek God. I ask Him. He takes care of my problems. I don't trust in myself to handle day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, I, I see God, he handles those things. And I don't worry about uh, uh, trying to be holier than thou uh, with all my piety, with my fasting and praying, all those kinds of activities. That's not what it's about. There's a relationship underneath anything that we practice that's holy. And when we get into the very end here, it really circles back to the beginning. David covered this in the very first video, that it's about practicing the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, matter of fact, we talked a little bit about this at, early on, about the houses and the two houses that are built and one on sand and, and, and how that uh, one's on solid rock and which one stands when the storm comes, because storms are coming. Matter of fact, some of you are in the middle of storms right now and uh, you need to know you're on solid ground. Don't let the storm throw you off the foundation that's taking care of you. Uh, we don't run from the storms, we endure them because God is in the middle of the storm and He takes care of us, right? So now He says here, Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine, verse 24 of chapter 7, and puts them into practice. Now I think when He says here these words of mine, He's talking about the whole Sermon on the Mount. He's not talking about just what's happened in chapter 7. It's the whole Sermon on the Mount. You hear all these words, you practice them, you're a wise man that built your house on a rock. The rain comes, steams, uh, streams rise, and the winds blow, and they beat against the house, and it doesn't fall. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. So, wise or foolish? What do you put your hope in, you see, that's going to stand and when the storms come, are you just going to be blown away? Well, if, if you're putting your things, uh, your hope in things that the world does, then yeah, that'll be gone quickly. But if your hope is sod, solidly on the foundation of Jesus and what he says, and he, and he explains all those through the sermon, if that's where your hope is, that's what you're standing on, you'll be fine in life. Now, remember, think about it this way. In the book of James, James says... Faith without works is dead. Jesus says, works without faith is dead. In other words, these words I'm, Jesus says are to be practiced. You're to be doers. And you do them with love. And you do them with life. And you do them with a relationship that says, I'm in the kingdom of God. And as a citizen of the kingdom of God, when God reigns in my life, the principles that guide me are totally different and turned upside down from what guides the world. So my way, it may be look narrow, it may look restrictive, but it is a way of liberty and freedom because it follows the words of Christ, who's the one that gives us life, right? Remember what he said in John 10, 10? I've come that you might have life and have it to the fullest or an abundant life, not just eternal life, but life here now. So even in the midst of storms, we have abundant life because of the words of Christ. And then he says this, as he kind of wraps up this sermon. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority. And then look, he says this, Matthew. 
not as teachers of the law. They instantly saw a difference between the teachers of the law and the teachings of Jesus. You could see it like black and white, night and day. They saw the difference between Jesus who taught giving life and giving freedom and a teacher with authority and the teachers of the law who was all about legalism and all about uh, explaining to people and putting a burden on them even though they didn't practice it themselves. So Jesus wants you to have a way to live that is successful, that is worry-free, that is full of joy, that repairs relationships, that redeems your own soul, that, that strengthens your own heart, and that puts you in a relationship that encourages other people in the same kingdom living. That's why he says, practice these words. When you're practicing these words in a relationship with God, you will be living proof that you are letting God reign in your life.